All right, so now we get into some rebirth details. Or is this uh, just more about Zack? All right, with the announcement of rebirth, I think the part that's most intriguing to fans is Zack. Will the FF7 rebirth story change greatly from the one than the one from the original game? Okay, hang on. Will the rebirth story change greatly than the one from the original game? Okay, the story's axis will not change. Regarding this new mystery that is different than the original game, I'm sure that those who played the original will enjoy a fresh experience while playing Rebirth. On that note, there will be some changes regarding the progression of the game. For example, when playing the game, you might think, wait, did that location get cut out? However, that's because the composition of the trilogy might be why certain places are not visited. There will be changes as to the order of when you head to certain locations, but in general, we do not plan to delete any locations. So this actually makes a whole lot of sense to me because um, when you play Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I was saying this like months and months ago when I talked about part two, maybe even a year ago or so, I was uh, kind of like speculating with this on my stream is that when you leave Midgar and you go to Calm, you get the cool flashback, right? You tell the story, but after you leave Calm, it's kind of like uh, a bit slow. It really is. You walk for a bit, then you get to Chocobo Farm, then you have to kind of like farm a Chocobo with the Gisal Greens, then you have to cross the swamp, then you have to go through the Mithril Cave, you kind of run into the Turks for a little bit, then you go to Fort Condor, not really like story driven, they're just like, hey, can you give us money or help us with this shit? And then you maybe run into Yuffie in the forest if you feel like it, because it's optional, and then, then you go to Junin and then the story starts to progress again. So what I'm thinking is, yeah, you know, they're going to have to mix up the order of the stuff because if they don't, it's going to be a lot of just not really story filled content. It's just going to be like, all right, getting from point A to point B, the next point of interest on the map to the next point of interest on the map because FF7, right? It gave you that illusion of being an open world game, but it was mostly like you were just on a straight line going from place to place. That is until you get Tiny Bronco or High Wind or Buggy, um, even though you know it's still kind of on those sort of rails. So yeah, instead of just leaving Calm and going through all that kind of like dead zone, there's probably going to be new details, or you you might just go straight to Junin. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I can't tell you for sure, but that's my idea of it. Is that they want to keep the story engaging, so having you go through that long trek. I don't think they they plan on doing that. Interview Rebirth. Okay, do you plan on making other remakes from the compilation? For example, Dirge of Cerberus, Vice and Nero's voices were in the Crisis Core FF7, and they also appeared in FF7 Art Integrate. Will they make another appearance? Okay, so we're talking about Dirge here. Or, okay, our staff really wanted to do a remaster of Dirge of Cerberus as well as before Crisis, but after taking into consideration the cost of doing so, we do not have plans at this time. We wanted them to show up in FF7 Integrated because we wanted all of the FF7 titles to be connected with a common world. They also appeared as a very formidable bosses, so that's why we decided on that. Um, yeah, basically, I doubt Dirge of Cerberus sold the amount of copies that they wanted it to sell, and uh, the cost of remastering it when it probably won't sell very well, especially since a lot of people really don't like the game. I don't mind it. I don't think it's perfect in any means. I wouldn't say that at all. I enjoy it. But yeah, you know, you got big content creators like Max, Dude, and stuff saying like, I erased this game from my memory. And, you know, many people saying, I can't believe this has the FF7 name in it, right? So it, unless there's like a huge love for Vincent, you know, after this trilogy, maybe they'll do it. But, uh, you know, thinking about this today, it was cool because they put Vice in Remake, right? As this boss in the PS5 version as an optional challenging boss and that was a great like idea it was a very very cool thing Vice is a very fun cool boss to fight he has all these different weapons he has multiple phases right from his sword phase to taking up Azul's gun and only magic can attack him and then he takes Rozo's scythe and Rozo's scythe and he's trying to charge at you at blistering speed and you're trying to dodge it this is what I think they should do with Dirge characters, to be honest. Like, I would not mind at all if you go to Gold Saucer or there's some sort of simulation and you get to fight Rosso the Crimson or Azul the Cerulean. I think that would be perfect, right? If we want to include anything from Dirge, making these really cool deep ground characters that stick out and are really powerful as formidable uh, optional bosses would be great content.
great content. You can be like, hey, you know, to the Dirge fans, we got something for you here. And then um, to the people who aren't so fond of it, it's just enough content to be interesting, right? To, you know, play some cool, play some cool bosses. The original Sephiroth joins your party and fights with you in the flashback. Will that happen again? Please wait for more information regarding that. So uh, they're probably, they're definitely going to include it, man. You don't have to worry. Uh, he might, he just might not have the authority to say that right now since it's not finished. Um, right? You don't want to say, you don't want to say too much as a developer, I feel like, because then people will be like, well, what about this and what about that? It, it, he's just, he's like, just hang on. <laughs> We're working it out. And when it's like a fully fleshed thing, we'll probably tell you about it. In that scene with Sephiroth, you can see the distance to the destination is quite far. It seems like the maps are extremely huge. I can't talk about that much yet, but it is very vast. Kitase. I hope you can also recall the original as well. Once you left Midgar, you had a feeling of, well, where do we go now? Um, yeah, so like they're kind of basing this stuff. Um, Hamaguchi, I remember his name. The uh, main director, uh, uh, co-director of FF7 Remake, who kind of like takes the orders and oversees everything with Nomura um, that he wants. That dude was saying like, yeah, we might follow something that is similar to uh, Horizon. In the sense that, like, no, it's not super open world and um, you can't go all these drastically different directions, but there will be wide open areas where uh, you can fight monsters, kind of explore for treasure and things like that, but then go to the next thing. And I think that's kind of like a good way to do it. I don't want this game to be open world, if I'm honest. Um, I don't think uh, open world games are very good, especially since FF15 kind of you know, ruined that image. There was just too much world to go through. You know, Max Dude was saying that, like a lot of the times you're just running or you're just driving and uh, it's kind of useless and it's kind of tedious and it kind of wastes the player's time. So having just these wide open areas similar to Horizon is, uh, is a good idea, right? It'll make you feel like it's big, but at the same time, keep you on track and uh, keep the story driven. Okay, and last thing. With such a vast world that opens up for you, anyone would be excited to start on their journey. In the trailer, we also see Zack carrying Cloud on his shoulders as they make their way back to Midgar. Yes, we hope that FF7 Rebirth will give you that feeling of opening up to the journey. Zack is a key character in this game, so please look forward to it. Dude. Dude. Playable Zack, man. I'm calling it, right? It's my only hope for this game, truly. Uh, you know, if it's gonna go off the rails and be crazy, Right, uh, I want to play as Zack. And if they're saying he's a key character in this game, uh, yeah, please, please make it happen, man. Please give me playable Zack in Rebirth. It's, it's like my one wish for this game. You can do whatever you want otherwise, but yeah, that's all I need. Let's move on to the second page. All right, I'm sure there are different possibilities regarding that scene and really makes you theorize. Well, since you mentioned there will be three parts, where exactly will FF7 Rebirth cover? Or where, where exactly will I have, yeah, this phrase is a little weird, but yeah. We've not announced until recently how many parts this story will be, as we actually were considering whether to do it in two or three parts. Only two parts? Since FF7R only covered Midgar, it left us with the impression there might be three or even four parts. The original game was only on three discs with the international version on four. Um, yeah, so international version is basically like FF7 Final Mix. They released it in Japan, then they made changes to, um... The American and the PAL release, and then these changes, which are basically like one of them I know for sure is fighting the weapons, like Emerald and Ruby Weapon. Um, to give these changes to Japan, they called it FF7 International and re released it. It's the same thing as Kingdom Hearts, right? Comes out in Japan, then comes out west, has some changes and some uh, improvements, and then you know, you got to give Japan these improvements too, or maybe even something extra for making them rebuy the game. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of what it was. Okay, we started planning with three parts in mind, but there was a time when Kitase suggested we actually divide it into two parts. It was one of the ideas I had among with many different ideas we were tossing around. When we were playing FF7R, it was difficult to see exactly how much manpower it would take, but after completing FF7 Remake, we had a much better picture of how much manpower and what type of schedule it would require. This is why I thought that we might be able to reach the ending with even the next installment. At the moment, we do not plan to do more than a trilogy. However, since FF7 Remake only took place in Midgar, people might be worried that the remaining two installments will have too much content and we might have to omit something. 
rest assured that we will not condense things as each installment has a lot to offer. So you can see this in uh, Remake, right? You can see this in part one that uh, nothing was left out of there, man. Really, I, I don't, I feel like maybe there was something like maybe, but nah, man, they're gonna, if anything, they're just gonna add into it. So at the bare minimum, they have to include all those things that we remember and love and interacted with, even the stuff we hated, right? I think they wanna, um, the stuff that's not tedious, right? Just that stuff that's not that important to people is still gonna be in there. And then, okay, now we can expand on the bare minimum and add things, you know, could be like Roche you know, or, or whatever. But I can't believe they were gonna do it in two parts, man. This isn't uh, my thought. I mean, it's a general thought about development, but yeah, with all this stuff that they're gonna establish in Rebirth, like the world and uh, Gold Saucer and all these things that you might have to backtrack to for the story, it's gonna take way less time than any of these. I think part three is gonna come out within like a year or two of, uh, probably like two years of part two of Rebirth. This, all this stuff is gonna be sick, guys. You have to get Crisis Core Reunion when it comes out, and you for sure, uh, you know, we're all gonna get Rebirth, right? But I can't wait, man. Every time these dudes talk, it's like the earth shakes, and we're all just so much more amped. So much more amped, because they're saying the right things. It's not like Square in the past, right, with the 2010s, where they're just like, well, just wait for more info. You know, we're working on it, just wait for more info. Like, no, dude, these dudes are actually giving us the info. And it sounds amazing. It really, ah, oh, it's gonna be so sick, dude. You guys amped? I'm amped. Let's do this, man. Like, we are like white girls outside of the club right now, wearing, you know, the tiniest little shirt. It's freezing cold, but we're just sitting there going, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great, right? We're gonna get into that club and it's gonna be worth it. It's going to be amazing. Yes. It's going to be so good. I cannot wait. God damn, dude. You are so spoiled, Mart. I am. I am. God loves me. He loves me so much. So uh, we'll see, dude.